hi everyone welcome back to my channel i know it's been months since i've uploaded a vlog um i pretty much have footage from august all the way through october and so this vlog is gonna be a chunky one the clips might be all over the place but i tried my best to make it work um but yeah, if you guys are new here, my name is Marlene Vega. I am an artist by night. I have a job during the day and I'm just trying to balance it all and trying to make this art thing happen, hopefully in the near future. I pretty much ended up taking August off, so you'll be seeing a lot more clips of me being outside and not being stuck inside working all day. Um, I go to Disneyland. I went to LA a couple weekends, um, and yeah, I just tried my best to record a bit more. I got a new camera, so it's actually been motivating me to try to record. Um, it's still pretty scary, vlogging outside in public just gets me really anxious, but I'm working on it. And yeah, so you'll be seeing a lot of that. I do illustrate a lot. Um, I actually did draw a lot during that time I was taking a break, but I was just not posting on Instagram and um, honestly that was really nice not having to prepare a post or like knowing that people would see this piece and like overthinking it so that was really fun you'll see a lot of that. You'll also hear some voiceovers because there's a lot of packing clips. I did have a shop update and um, yeah hopefully you guys enjoy this vlog. Um, I'll see you guys in a bit.
This was back in August. I was working on illustrations for all my social media links. For the longest time, I've actually been wanting my own website where I can have my portfolio or contact information and just like all the links in one place where people can find me. I felt like just having this felt a little more professional. I know I'm an artist, but it just makes me feel like a real artist. But yeah, I finally invested in a website. I bought my domain name and I put the website together. I ended up going with Marlene Vega Studio. I actually wanted Marlene Vega, but that name was taken. I have no idea what they're using that website for. I was a little salty, but this was the next best thing I could come up with. So now I can direct people to my MarleneVegaStudio.com website where they can find my portfolio and just my best works, contact information, all my social media links, and it just looks a lot more professional. There's nothing wrong with just having your Instagram account and showing people that. Personally, I've just been wanting my own website and it was finally time that I did it and I'm glad that I took the time to put it together because I really like how it turned out. And now when people want to get a hold of me, contact me for hopefully a sponsorship, they can just click my links and find me through there, find my email and that way I don't have to like go through DMs and stuff on Instagram because that gets lost really easily. And yeah, let me know what you guys think. It was watered down. Five out of ten. Today it was very watered down. How you feel? Loki tired. <laughs> it's, it's 4 p.m. I mean, that's pretty good. It's pretty respectable in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> we got here at nine. Yes, yeah, it's almost a full, full, a full shift. No lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad though. 
No, for sure. What's up? What's up? What's poppin'? I'm sweaty. Oh yeah, it's hot again. Yeah. It's hot. I'm out here. How? Talking for Marlene, because I don't know what her intro would be, but... What's good? <laughs> <laughs> It's 7.24 and we're tired. Calling it a day? <laughs> Are we calling it a day? <laughs> uh, we suck. We do suck. So yeah, mini update. Mini update.
time driving to LA within the same month. I know I live in Southern California, but to be honest, I hardly go to LA. If anything, I go there maybe max twice a year, but to go within the same month is pretty unheard of for me. This was actually pretty random. I received a message from a friend I made on Instagram and they were having this friends and family soft opening event for their new cafe in Los Angeles and he invited me and so I was really shocked. I was not expecting this and I thought, okay, I need to take advantage of this opportunity and go. And when I ended up checking out their cafe, I thought it was the coolest thing ever. I actually followed the artist that designed the inside and so I just had to go and support. I think this was on a Wednesday and I normally work and there was just no way I would have made it on time if I left after work because the traffic getting to Los Angeles after 5 p.m. is just terrible. Um, if you live in Southern California, you know what I'm talking about. But yeah, I messaged my boss, asked her if I could get off early and she was super cool with it. She told me that I could finish up my work at night if I needed to, but yeah, so I was able to go and I took my sister, my boyfriend drove us. I also finally got to meet my online friend, follow each other, but we never actually met in person. So that was pretty cool. I was really nervous. I feel like I was just really awkward. But yeah, it was a great time. We got free drinks, pastries. It was just an experience. We definitely took lots of pictures. You know, we had to take advantage of that photo op. But yeah, we had a good time and I'm glad that I was able to go and I was able to skip out on work for that day. <laughs> well, the sun's coming out. Afterwards, we ended up just walking to the nearest Shake Shack to grab some lunch because we hadn't eaten actually. I know I was born and raised in Southern California and In-N-Out is the thing here, but to be honest, I much rather have Shake Shack over In-N-Out. I know people will probably try to fight me on that, but that's my opinion. I love Shake Shack way better. So I had to take advantage that we were in LA to get some because where I live, there's none um, in the area. And so we just had to get our Shake Shack fix. Honey bites. So they're hot and it comes with this honey sauce. And I want you guys all to try one. you told me so I just gave up on it.
Hey guys, so it's currently 2 o'clock, it's Monday, and I just had a shop update this past weekend, and I think it went pretty well. I got quite a few orders, not as much as last time. I don't know, I think Instagram's been kind of crappy lately. I feel like hardly any of the people who actually follow me see my posts, so I've been dealing with that. Yeah, at this point, I don't know what kind of footage I have. I've been, like, filming since August, and now it's October, October 25th. But yeah, I had a shop update, and I was super excited to finally launch my enamel pin collection. I think I had them sent to get made around July. Honestly, at this point, I don't remember when I sent the order. Um, I guess they manufactured it incorrectly. And they didn't tell me until I asked, like, hey, how's my order going? It's been um, over a month now. And yeah, they told me that they had to redo it, hence why they were taking forever. So the first one is this concha pin, which is just pretty much sweet bread. I'm Mexican, so we typically have this, like, in the morning with coffee or even at night with, like, hot chocolate or coffee. Um, it's pretty much a staple in our diet. But yeah, I've been wanting to make one of these for the longest time because i see a lot of cute like food related pins online but i hardly see any like mexican foods um so i was like i need to change that so i uh wanted to do that with this collection so this is hot chocolate one this is a hot chocolate brand that we always have at home any occasion when there's coffee there's always hot chocolate and so in my family we always have the abuelita hot chocolate and so i felt like i needed to make this and I've never seen it anywhere, so I thought it was super cute. The third design is this Tres Leches cake, another Mexican food item. You can find this at any Mexican event, birthday party, baptism, baby shower, you name it. I'm actually not like the biggest fan of Tres Leches cake. I think it's because I've had it so much growing up and I might be a little tired of it, but I did love it. Um, I just probably overdid it. thought this was super cute and um, I really like the backing card. I try to make it birthday theme. So that's the third design. The fourth one that probably so many people have seen for the past couple of months already is this um, lavender milk one. Yeah, so I designed this a while ago. I feel like people on my Instagram are probably sick of seeing it, but I love it. It's finally out, so if you've been waiting for it, it's available in my Etsy shop. Um, and then the last design 
Oh, I think I packed it. Um, let me put one together. But, of course, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you guys know the final design was a bubble tea or milk tea with boba enamel pin. Um, and so, this is the final design. Yeah, I really love how the backing card for this one turned out. I thought it was super cute. Hey guys, voiceover me is here. I knew I was going to have a lot of packing content, so I decided I should throw in a voiceover to make it a bit more entertaining. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to talk about this comic that I posted about a week ago and surprisingly it went really well. I've been inspired lately by a couple of artists, um, one specifically Megan, she goes by Studio Maggie on YouTube and Instagram and she does like these lovely comics, super relatable, she expresses how she feels and then does them in like this cute illustrative way and so um this other artist uh jisoo i think her handle is jisoopy was hosting this inktober prompt list one of them was what's a fear you hold and of course it got me thinking and i'm like oh crap like i don't know what the heck i'm doing with my life and obviously that's not something that I share with people or I talk to people about besides like my boyfriend my sister super close friends and yeah I'm like oh okay I'll try to illustrate this see if I can make a comic out of it and yeah I made a comic uh, pretty much saying my fear is that I don't know what the heck I'm doing with my life I've done so much I've accomplished various things but i still don't know what i want to do and i hate that i feel this pressure to succeed and make something out of myself that's pretty much what the comic is and to my surprise so many people reached out commented that they felt the same way have been feeling the same way and letting me know that i'm not alone and honestly that helped so much just knowing that I wasn't the only person feeling that way. I mean, obviously I know there's a lot of people who feel like that, but at least me with the people I grew up with or went to school with, everyone seemed to have their shit figured out, their life planned out. And I was always just going with the flow. I was like, I just want to graduate. I'm the first one in my family to go to college, the first one to get a bachelor's degree the first one to get a master's degree i got a degree in physics um my family has not done that before so i mean those felt like huge accomplishments to me but i've always felt like okay you know now you need to get that full-time job you need to do well to provide for your parents and help them out i'm a first generation mexican-american if you guys didn't know there's always like this pressure to succeed to help out your family and it's been what three years now that i've graduated um currently not doing anything physics related i was teaching for some time but i took a break because it was too much it was stressing me out and with covid and teaching being online it was not my thing and i decided to let it go take a break and it's been really nice since but i think because i'm not doing anything physics related i kind of feel guilty in a way like i spent all these years going to school studying focusing only on school so i can get this degree so i can get a job in that field teaching to be exact and now that i've tried it out i don't really love it um and i'm not doing it yeah, it makes me feel some type of way because, like, I should love it. I should be doing it. And I think because of that, like, I was always scared to catch up with, like, any old friends, any old classmates who I went to school with or, um, yeah, I was always scared to catch up with, like, anyone who I haven't seen in a while because, I mean, 
obviously the first questions you get asked is like what are you doing now where do you work how much money do you make i mean obviously they're not that blunt but that's where it's getting at and yeah i never had anything to say or felt like i never really had an update to give people so i low-key like avoided meeting up with people catching up then covid happened and we couldn't see people so in a way that was like a relief for me yeah so that's pretty much what my fear has been like these past three years been lingering since i graduated and it's never something that I've expressed or shared with people. So the fact that a lot of people came out saying that they felt the same way, people that I went to school with, people that I thought had everything figured out, and they all were feeling the same way, made me feel like, okay, I'm not alone. I'm not the only one. And yeah, it was really nice. So in a way that kind of lifted some stress off me, like feeling like I need to be a certain way or else like everyone's going to perceive me as a failure. Yeah, I guess I was always scared for people to be like judging me, saying like, oh, she's doing art now, like she's trying to do YouTube. Now, all of a sudden, like, wasn't she studying this other thing? Like, I know I shouldn't care, obviously, but you know, it's still in the back of your head sometimes. But yeah, now that I've uploaded that comic, people know how i feel others feel the same way honestly it feels a lot better so i guess now i just you know just going with the flow taking it day at a time seeing what brings me joy and just trying not to put so much pressure on myself but i would like this art thing to be a thing it's just really hard sometimes especially with instagram lately i feel like they're always changing their algorithm or something I feel like lately hardly anyone who actually follows me sees my posts. I've been reading like a lot of people say like only 10% of your followers are shown your posts and it's pretty much true. Like I've looked at the analytics and around what 2000 ish people see my posts or it gets shown to and then obviously from there out of those 2000 only a percentage actually like or interact with your posts. And so that determines if your post gets shown to any more people or like future posts but yeah so lately that's been kind of crappy definitely makes me question whether is this something i should keep doing like i know i shouldn't base my worth on numbers but it's kind of hard to ignore them sometimes but yeah so that's that yeah, I just, I don't know where I'm gonna go at the moment. I just know I'm gonna take it a day at a time. Try not to focus on all these numbers. Um, and, you know, hopefully it works out. And if it doesn't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm just rambling now. So I think I'll leave you guys here. Um, hopefully whatever I said made sense. Um, and yeah, thank you guys for listening.
I went to the container store yesterday with my boyfriend and I ended up getting a couple of organizers. One being this one right here that you see. It's super cute. I've been wanting to look for like something to organize all my pin supplies. Um, so like this was the perfect thing for it. So like I have two sets of pin designs here. Um, my backing cards. Um, I have notepads for thank you notes. And like the other designs are here, which fit perfectly. Uh, I ended up putting the remainder of the keychains that I have left here. Pins with the backing cards already um, ready to go. And my thank you cards. So I thought this was really nice to get all my stuff organized. Um, I've had it in a different um, cabinet, but I think this looks really nice and just more accessible for me and I could just bring it out on my desk when I need to pack pin orders and then put it away if I don't want it on my desk. I also got this for my pens, so just more pen and pencil storage. I got this blush pink cabinet. I already had one which I used to store all my stickers and I saw this one. I walked into the store. It wasn't even for me. We went to get my boyfriend some cereal containers and I walked out with this. <laughs> but yeah, it's really cute. The only issue is that I just noticed that it's kind of crooked. If you notice like the gap between them at the bottom gets much wider compared to the top. So like now that I look at it, I can see that it's like leaning towards the left and I just can't unsee it. But yeah, so this one I'm gonna have to hold off. Hopefully they have more, fingers crossed. But yeah, so that's what I ended up getting from the container store. Very dangerous store. You go in for one thing and you walk out with like spending $200. Zane King, where are you going, girl? To the farmer's market. Really? I'm an um, interior designer on my spare time, you know, I like to bring people's dreams to life and giving them the rooms that they've always wanted. So where do you do that? Um, on an animal crossing.